Good evening. Welcome to the Glasoff Gang. Tonight, back by popular demand, Elisha <laughs> Kraus, a staff writer at truthrevolt.org and the co-host of The Morning Answer at AM870. Was the popular demand my mother? <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> no, Alicia, we were flooded with phone calls really? and emails. I'm so honored. Facebook. Nice. And uh, they said, have her back right away. Great. And we tried to. I'm glad to be here. Okay, fantastic. Now, Alicia, and mm -hmm. you were here last time, and one thing a lot of the viewers wanted to hear more from you. Okay. Uh, you were on with... I know, I was on with Ben and Jeremy, and they're all yap, yap, yap all the time. I didn't say that. <laughs> I can, Okay. Right? Are but uh, tremendous performance by Ben, as we know. Yeah, uh, yeah. But not just performance, but what he did at UCLA that maybe we'll talk a little was bit about amazing. Fight, fighting tactics. But mm -hmm. Jeremy and uh, Boring and, he, no, he's not Boring. That's his name, Jeremy it, it's Boring. It's actually his name. It's he's his, the lot, I mean, when you think Jeremy, you don't think the word he's Boring. He's not Boring. No. And Ben Shapiro was on, and we were discussing yep. the new conservative media watchdog group that you're a staff writer Truth for. Truth Revolt. It is. I'm so excited to be a part of it. I've been there almost since uh, the creation or the founding, and Ben brought me on board. We do a morning show in L.A. and the I.E. every morning, Monday through Friday. And... Um, he knew that I was interested in kind of getting more involved in the movement in any way I can and hopefully having an influence. So I watch three hours of MSNBC every day, so you don't have to. You're very welcome. Thank you. And then I write about it. And I've, I've worked in conservative media for a very long time, first uh, behind the scenes as a producer for the Sean Hannity radio show for seven years. And then now I'm, I have the amazing opportunity to be on air. And it is incredibly interesting to me how people bash, say, Fox News or talk radio, but we're very open about our beliefs and, and what we get paid to do. Like, I get paid for my opinion as a conservative Christian woman. Um, but what's so amazing to me is people like Ed Schultz or Al Sharpton or Chris Matthews, who I have to watch every single day, pretend to be fair and balanced and pretend to be anchors and politically savvy kind of human beings and they're, when they're really just liberal talking heads. Um, so I'm excited that Truth Revolt is really exposing a lot of this uh, media misinformation that's out there. Thank you, Alicia. Um, let me ask you this. One of the it's, it's great that Truth Revolt is now in the battle on the front lines, mm -hmm. but why did it take so long? What's wrong with conservatives that there was a, a huge gap there that we needed a truth revolt. I, What's wrong with conservatives and why did it take people like Ben Shapiro, David Horowitz, Jeremy to put this thing together? I mean, it's great that they did, mm -hmm. but what's wrong with conservatives that it, it that had it's not taken existed? This. Yeah. I, I think it's um, because conservatives have lives. I mean, my mom always used to say when you when you see the uh, immigration march, I guess I think that was like back in May of 2005, or you see Occupy Wall Street, she would always kind of be like, I'd love to be down there protesting for conservative values or pro-life values or whatever, but I got three kids, a business, a husband with a job, and then another job. And, and so I think that conservatives, we care so much about how politics and media are affecting our everyday lives, but there's so much else that, that we put at the top of the podium you know, the podium, like the, the total personal pole. is not political the, with conservatives. It, it, it is, but it's not so much so that they're willing to drop everything uh -huh. and go fight for it. And I think that it's really important that we start to maybe find people or leaders that are able to balance both, that the political definitely affects the personal, and, and we need to inspire people and fire them up to deal with it. And then the other thing, too, is I think really the last couple of election cycles have really disappointed um, conservatives and they've been discouraged and kind of feel like the underdog but the underdog with no chance of winning and I think that uh, the Horowitz Foundation and Truth Revolt and this resurgence of talk radio's popularity and, and all these other aspects out there in politics right now uh, hopefully will light a fire under people's butt to, to get involved and, and to make a change. Absolutely. And one thing I think, too, is conservatives, many conservatives don't understand that for the left, this is a war. Absolutely. And the left is fighting 24-7. Well, and just like Vladimir Putin is patient when it comes to taking over Crimea and, and the Ukraine, 
Um, I think that liberals have the long game in mind, and, and unfortunately, sometimes conservatism is is too short term, and we and we want instant results, and and that's okay. And sometimes there's some things where that's really needed. There's massive cuts in our spending that are needed right now. There's massive changes that we need to make to national security that are needed right now. Mm. There's you know Obamacare needs to be repealed right now, mm. but the, there are other things that we need to definitely consider a long game. Okay. Uh, so tell me about truthrevolt.org, mm -hmm. uh, the impact it's making and uh, what you're seeing with your eyes and hearing with your ears at what's happening there. I think it's really great. I mean, Vanity Fair has written about us, Breitbart, uh, Twitchy, many numerous, Drudge, I mean, many numerous sites are picking up the stuff that we're covering Flies there. off gang. I mean, there you go. Big one right there. <laughs> right? Um, that are picking up what we're doing and what we're talking about because there's so many writers and staffers that are involved and from different backgrounds and perspectives too that are able to pick up things that are happening in the news or pick up things that are happening in media that other people aren't catching at all. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's really exciting. And, and so look, when you came on the show, what we were discussing uh, two weeks ago with Ben, mm -hmm. is that Ben crashed that UCLA hearing on divestment from Israel yeah. at, uh, at UCLA. And that's something you don't see conservatives doing a lot of the time. Uh, and, and people like Ben are now on the front lines. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we know that Breitbart engaged in, in this uh, political war and David Horowitz. Uh, tell us a little bit about what conservatives need to be doing in this tradition. Mm -hmm. I think in general what conservatives need to consider and what the conservative movement needs to focus on is, is how do you reach, you know, I'm 28 years old, I'm a young mom, I'm a young wife, I'm a young professional, and heck, I'm a woman. and and I really think that the conservatives can take, and unfortunately, Mike Huckabee tried to do it with his accurate comment about um, un Uncle Ben paying for women's birth control. You've seen Rand Paul try to do it, talking about the war on women and bringing up Bill Clinton, and everybody's kind of failed. I think that the conservative movement really needs uh, a well-spoken woman out there to talk about the liberal war on women and how that's affecting women in the United States today from millennials like myself up to you know my 82 year old grandmother and then I think that the conservative movement really also needs to move out of the well the Republican Party needs to stop being the backdoor deals with super rich West Coast or left coast and East Coast Republicans uh, smoking cigars and wearing their five thousand dollar suits hmm. um, I think that there's a lot of principles I have friends that work in Silicon Valley um, friends that work in fashion, friends that work in uh, media, and I think that there's a lot of things that my friends that would call themselves liberals when we really ha sit down and have dialogue or go to happy hour uh, or, you know, Manny Petty's and have girl talk, we're able to discuss the things that I'm like, hey, you're actually pretty conservative when we talk about um, not wanting the government to infringe on our religious liberties or freedom of speech when we talk about even um, life issues as science is advancing and showing just how early a fetus is, is truly a baby and a human being. Um, even issues of national security and international relations where I think sometimes people in our generation automatically assume they might be liberal, but if we were to sit down and talk with them about the platform of the different parties and the belief systems there, we could win them over to our side. I just think that we probably have the wrong faces for the movement right now. And Alicia, do some of them get scared when you actually say to them, hey, you're conservative? Oh, in totally. In other words... Then they know, kind of backtrack and yeah. then, no, I'm just socially conservative. Or, no, I'm just fiscally conservative. That yeah. if, if you have this w word or this name of conservative on you, that it might mean that, that you're a racist, bigot, homophobe, Bible Belt, non And the left has been very effective. Whatever. The yeah, and they've been, been very, totally effective. Yeah. At, and so we've, I think we really need to fight back mm -hmm. that narrative because mm -hmm. it's untrue. You mentioned uh, women in terms of leadership. Mm -hmm. um, hey, I'm going to come out and say I, I really liked Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. Why was she so hated by the left? Because they don't like... Uh, the left is really good at saying that they are for women until there's a woman that disagrees with them on any issue. Um, I mean, I'm not nearly as famous, well-known, or popular as Sarah Palin, but it is incredible the, the hatred I get compared to my two co-hosts mm -hmm. on radio every day. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's not just from the left. It's also from conservatives mm -hmm. that are just automatically harsher. And now listen, I'm not saying that a, a non-qualified woman needs to be made the face of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. I'm all for 
people getting jobs or roles or opportunities because of their qualifications. But I think that there are many qualified women within the Republican Party that um, the RNC would be well served to try to encourage to, to be the face of, of certain topics and issues. Okay, just for the record, Ben and Jeremy are nice to you, though, over yes. two, three volts, yes. right? Yes, they're great. <laughs> okay, fantastic. I mean, no, it's me. <laughs> Alicia, uh, it's such a breath of fresh air to listen to you and everything that you have to say. And uh, I kind of want to ask you, mm -hmm. how did you get here with who you are? Why didn't you become a liberal? Why aren't you a leftist? Can you tell us a little bit about your background, well, my about your family, maybe what influenced mm -hmm. you? Was it a book? Was it a family member? I think it was just uh, life. I'm from the Bible Belt. I'm from the very southeast corner of Oklahoma. Um, and my dad was... I was born in Miami, Florida. My dad was in the Coast Guard for 20 years. And when he was moved to American Airlines after retiring from the Coast Guard and his military service there, uh, he worked for American Airlines, which is based out of Dallas. And I saw my father, who was always willing to, I mean, really go the extra mile. He chose to move us to rural Oklahoma to take care of his parents because he was an only child. And my mother decided to homeschool us. And I was homeschooled for all 12 years. And as I got older, I realized, wow, my dad really made a lot of sacrifices to drive three and a half hours one way to commute to his job and then get on a plane and have the lives of like 200 people in his hands and work crazy shifts and then drive home and be with us and do the honey-do list and teach us how to take a part and clean and shoot a gun and then take us camping and hunting and all this other great stuff. And so I think that for me... Um, maybe I didn't even know what conservatism was until I got older, but once I was able to recognize, I was able to see that that's what my parents were living out every day in their lives. And then, you know, leaving and meeting other people, kind of discovering that it just, it made sense to me. I mean, I'm, I'm not a Harvard-educated attorney like my co-host Ben Shapiro, but to me, I mean, you don't have to be to figure out that conservatism is, is a much better and more logical answer for, for people to follow. Now, Alicia, you seem like a very cool person. Okay? Thank you. I think that you're cool. <laughs> okay. But cool people uh -huh. usually hang around with a lot of cool people. I think but, my uh, friends and family are cool, yeah. Okay, but a lot of the cool people in our society yeah. usually frown on conservatives. I think Have that you, you need to... What I want to ask is... See, no, I'm going to take issue okay. with that, though, because you're, now, you're, now you're portraying, you're like mm. promoting the liberal narrative of mm -hmm. conservatives aren't cool. And no, I think that there's I, a lot of conservatives mm, that are cool. Okay, wait. No, absolutely. Yes. I think that they're cool. Uh -huh. but, okay, let me rephrase that. What I mean is everywhere that I've been in terms of, let's say, in the hip-hop communities, mm -hmm. let's say in some academic communities or in acting worlds, mm -hmm. what I mean is those worlds that consider themselves cool, but okay. where, there are the, where there are a lot of quote-unquote cool well, people. Well, I'm not in the hip-hop or okay, the just acting wait. So what I wanted to ask is, have you ever had... What, what has been your journey in terms of maybe being in certain cliques or communities mm. where you were frowned upon and maybe you weren't popular because of your views? Oh, Have I've, you suffered from that? Oh, well, that's my, what I want to ask. My entire life. Okay, I think that's like what, even in a small town where everybody knows everybody, mm -hmm. um, I was like the homeschool geek mm -hmm. that decided to, you know, be celibate until I was married. So, I mean, yeah, there's that's crazy no matter where you are. Now, and by so, the way, that's cool. So, I just want to fix that. Well, in then terms your of level of cool may be different than what the world's level of cool is. No, I mean that but, those people thought they were cool that oh, were yeah, putting yeah, you yeah. down. Absolutely. Okay? Like the cheerleaders right. and the QBs and right. all that stuff. But it's just high school stupidity. Uh -huh. But then moving at 18, moving to New York and starting to go to college, I think I definitely kind of... But I think it made me a stronger person to realize that I was different than everyone else mm -hmm. and that they might not think of me as cool, but determine that that's not, I didn't care about what they thought anyway. I had the long game in mind of uh -huh. like what my goals and my dreams and my vision were or, for my life. You didn't and care. So, but that has, that has allowed me opportunities to, I think I've definitely had people come back to me years later and say, yeah, we thought you were a little weird. Mm -hmm. um, we thought you were like an odd political geek, but how many, there's been, I can't even count how many relationships have then been able to flourish and thrive because I just remain true to myself uh -huh. and continue to just be myself yeah. from 18 to 28. And now I have the opportunities to be with people in PR and media and fashion and um, film and politics on both sides of the aisle that I never would have imagined. 
Fantastic. And I guess, yeah, we're on different pages there in terms of maybe what we're, what I was saying about uh -huh. cool. But my point is, is what that the I, world deems what cool. I, know, yeah. I know so many people that say, even have said to me, Jamie, can you just leave me alone for a while? I don't want to discuss politics because I really need to fit in but over here. When you seem, you just, what, if, if that ever presented itself, you didn't care. Well, but I also think that there's a lot more to, and, and I just feel like I'm kind of like called to just love people, that mm -hmm. even if I think that they're stupid in their political leanings, that there's probably something else that we can talk about or agree about. So mm -hmm. if I have a girlfriend that's super liberal, but she's going through a really hard breakup, I'm still going to be there for her. And so I think that that goes back to like the personal and political aspect of yes. being a conservative. That yes, for me, politics is very very personal yes. but there are other my my faith is very personal but there's other aspects to life where you can probably relate to and build relationship with people without being like oh i voted for obama well i didn't know we have to hate each other now absolutely Does that make sense absolutely but oh. you're hitting on something in the sense that with a lot of my friends who happen to be liberal or left wing or acquaintances i was always there for them and mm -hmm. i'm willing to treat them just as friends mm -hmm. but in that in those communities when they find out i'm conservative they can't return that niceness Isn't back that to me and they pretend they're humanitarians exactly. but yet they and they, they try to take a cheap the, shot at me every time they see me and they pretend that they're the ones that are compassionate loving people and that conservatives right. can't be and and so we've got to start winning the fight by by really showing them who we are Alicia, all good things must come to an end. Oh, no. Like you that was so fast. Like you gracing the Glazoff gang with your presence. But in 45 seconds, tell our viewers what's really on your mind these days and what they should be thinking about as well. I mean, I'm still going to say my daughter. She's here tonight with her daddy. Excellent. Um, and I, I definitely look at her. She's seven months old today. And... I think about the future for her and other kids. We're at this stage of life where all of our friends are now married and having babies and some of them having babies number two and three. And I think about um, what is our nation going to look like in when she goes to college and, and what are the issues that she's going to face as she becomes a woman that I hope is an independent, strong-willed, uh, free-thinking woman. And um, and I hope to make a difference today in, in her future and other children's future. Alicia, it's been an honor and a privilege to have you Thanks on the Glass Off Gang. Me. Thank you for joining the Glass Off Gang. Make sure to go to truthrevolt.org and join the battle for freedom and liberty in our nation. We'll see you next week. Good night.